I'm saying Tampa wins this series two games to none. But I think Toronto has a little bit more talent in the offensive category. I think they go on the road, and I think they take down the Twins two games to one. And Milwaukee rallies back, wins the next two, and then they take down the Diamondbacks two games to one. I think the Marlins are going to pull the upset. I think Miami wins this series two games to one. Greetings baseball fans and welcome to the Fireball Review channel. Well, straight off the heels of quite honestly the worst prognostication videos in the history of prognostication videos, I am back with you once again, very humbled after going, yes, folks, 0-4 in my wild card prediction video this past week. It was a total unmitigated disaster. Every single team I picked to win lost their series. I mean, let's let's face facts. The, the crazy junkie that hangs outside my local 7-Eleven that rants and raves that he's one of the nine Supreme Court justices could have said that the Phillies would knock off the Marlins. But I picked the Marlins. I went with my heart, not my head. And I even lost that series. So I embarrassed myself. I embarrassed my family. I embarrassed my country. But what the hell? Let's try it again. Well, just a few observations about the wild card round before we dive into the division series. Toronto Blue Jays, what in the blue hell were you guys thinking pulling Jose Barrios out of that game two after only four innings? They said after the game it was an organizational decision. Let me tell you something, that is code for the analytic geeks that went to Harvard and Yale told John Schneider, the manager, if he doesn't pull him after four innings, he's going to get fired at the end of the season. And look, it completely blew up in their face. You can't rely on four or five relievers to close that game. It's just not going to work out. Barrios, he was pitching a gem. He's one of their best pitchers. Let the guy pitch into the sixth inning. It's not going to hurt anything. I remember when Jack Morris in the 1991 World Series, I was a little kid at the time, the guy pitched 10 innings, okay? He pitched a complete game, 10 innings in a game seven of the World Series. If these analytic geeks were the GM back in that time period for the Twins, they would have pulled the guy after six or seven innings and the Twins would have lost the World Series. These guys don't know everything. I know they're very smart. I know they went to Harvard. I know they went to Yale. And look, you can get to the playoffs by being heavy on analytics. That's why the Rays are in the playoffs every year, year after year. It's why Oakland is in there quite often. I know they've kind of hit some, uh, some rough patches recently. But nonetheless, when you get into the playoffs, you have to let these pitchers go a little bit deeper. It's not going to kill them. This is just utter insanity. But incidentally, congratulations to the Minnesota Twins. They have won their first playoff series since before the iPhone was invented. So that's a very long time. Congratulations to all the Twins fans out there. Also in the Rays series, I picked the Rays to represent the American League on Monday when I made that video. I said they would square off against the Braves. That's obviously not going to happen now. They had those four errors at the beginning of Game 1 that just totally doomed them, and then they just got their clocks cleaned in Game 2. Texas has a great offense. Probably the second best offense in the playoffs behind Atlanta. They're gonna. That's going to be a tall order for Baltimore to beat them. Let me tell you something about the Marlins. I think the Marlins would have won that series had their number one fan actually been in attendance. Marlins man, I'm calling you out, man. You've been at every major sporting event, sitting in the front row, head-to-toe Marlins gear. The team finally makes the playoffs, and you're in Milwaukee at the Brewers Diamondbacks game. So let's get into these divisional series matchups. First off in the American League, we got the Minnesota Twins going up against everyone's favorite team. You know them, you love them, you hate them. Okay, most of you hate them. I dubbed them America's team. They are the defending World Series champion, Houston Astros. Let me tell you something, Dusty Baker, this guy's been around since Abraham Lincoln was president, and there's no way he's going to allow any stat geek up in the booth to tell him when to pull his pitchers. So Minnesota's not going to have that advantage this time around. The Astros, they have the veteran leadership, they have the experience, and look, they can line up their pitching rotation however the hell they want to Minnesota won't have that luxury coming out of the wild card round. I think Houston takes this series. They definitely have the offensive tools to take down Minnesota. Look, it's three out of five, guys. Anything can happen. We saw it in the two out of three series. Three out of five is very similar. These short series can get very wacky. Minnesota can take down Houston, but I think Houston's got one more left in them. I think they take down the Twins 
three games to one. Over in the other American League Divisional matchup, we have the Texas Rangers going up against the Baby Brewers, the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles have not won a division title in quite some time. They succeeded in their mission this year, though. I think the last time the Orioles won the championship in the American League East, I, I don't know if the internet was invented at that particular time. It's been a very long time for them. But I think they're still a little bit thin in the starting pitching and in the bullpen. They have some injuries down in the bullpen. Meanwhile, Texas's rotation is not that great either. This is going to be, this could, there could be a lot of 13-12 games in these five series. But I think maybe the X factor in this series is Max Scherzer. There's a possibility when, at the time I'm filming this, this is Thursday night, the division series starts on Saturday, that Scherzer could make the roster. He's been on the injured list for quite some time now, but he might pitch in this series. If he pitches, I think Texas wins this series. But, you, you, you know, Scherzer's an unpredictable guy. He's kind of a wacky guy. He likes running around without his t-shirt on all the time. And he, he's, cra he's hitting himself in the face on the mound. He's got those two colored eyes. So you never know what he's going to do. He's an unpredictable fellow. Offensively, it's kind of a wash. I think Texas has probably a slightly better offense, too. So I wouldn't say it's a wash. I would say Texas has the advantage here. But Baltimore's got a remarkable offense. They won 100-plus games. But again, I think they lack veteran leadership on that team in Baltimore. I wish they would have added a couple of veterans at the trade deadline. I think that's going to be their undoing in this series. And I think Texas is going to take down the Orioles Three games to two. Over in the National League Divisional matchup, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks fresh off their upset of the Milwaukee Brewers going up against the Mighty Dodgers. And ladies and gentlemen, this is just going to be a good old-fashioned hate fest. These two teams don't like each other. The Diamondbacks have hated the Dodgers, have detested the Dodgers ever since 2013 when the Dodgers won the division title at their stadium at Chase Field and then proceeded to go out and celebrate in their swimming pool beyond the left center field wall out at that stadium and then Yasiel Puig apparently peed in the pool. And that'll put a damper on any party, ladies and gentlemen. But I gotta level with you, ladies and gentlemen. This, to me, is probably the biggest mismatch on paper of these four division series matchups. The Dodgers are very vulnerable this year in the starting pitching department. Walker Buehler's not gonna pitch in this series. Urias is not gonna pitch in this series. And we all know that Kershaw is very inconsistent in the playoffs. He'll have a good start and he has a bad start. Zach Gallen will only pitch probably one game in this series, probably game three, because he pitched in game two of the wild card. So that's a disadvantage for the Diamondbacks, and quite frankly, it should be a disadvantage. They didn't win the division, so they can't line up their pitching staff the way they would like to. And look, the Dodgers' offense is probably one of the two or three best in all of baseball. They have a much better offense than the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks have pitched very well out of the bullpen in those, that two-game series against the Brewers, but it was two games, and the Brewers don't have the offense the Dodgers have. I think the Dodgers are probably going to sweep this series. Hopefully, the Diamondbacks can at least manage to win one game. I would love to see the Diamondbacks pull the upset and maybe get back at the Dodgers for the pool incident of 2013. Maybe they can put like a rattlesnake in the Dodgers clubhouse if they win this series, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Dodgers sweep this series. Three games to none. Final division series matchup. We probably have the best matchup, the most competitive matchup, the sort of Ali Frazier type matchup. We have the Philadelphia Phillies going up against the Atlanta Braves. And I got to tell you, folks, I think these are the two best teams currently playing in Major League Baseball. It's a rotten shame that both of these teams have to square off in a short series this early in the postseason. I don't understand the seedings this year. I don't know why the Phillies, who are, I think, the fourth seed in the National League, why they're playing Atlanta, who's the number one seed. Shouldn't Atlanta be playing Arizona? I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason behind it. I didn't do any research before this video. I probably should have. But it seems like the Braves totally got screwed. They should be playing the Diamondbacks this round, and the Dodgers should have to deal with the Phillies. But be that as it may, this is going to be a dogfight of a series, folks. It could go either way. You know, I'm pulling for the Braves. The Braves are my National League team, full disclosure here. But it, this is a tough draw for them. This is the team that eliminated them in the postseason last year. They're going to have their hands full. Max Fried has a, has a blister injury. He's their best pitcher on the Braves staff. And maybe he pitches, maybe he doesn't. I think he'll pitch, but probably later in the series. We'll see what happens, but the Braves' offense is absolutely awesome. They're brutal. 
I think they're going to take down Philadelphia, but this is a scary series. I think if I think personally, folks, I think whoever wins this series will probably go on to win the World Series. You never know; things happen. But I think these are the two best teams remaining in Major League Baseball, and I think Atlanta wins this series. But it's going to be a dogfight for the Bravos. The Bravos take down Philadelphia three games to two. But now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments below who wins these four division series matchups. And you also got me thinking about the pool scandal of 2013. What the hell happened to Yasiel Puig? He left the Dodgers, went to the Reds for a year or two. Then he signed with the Braves during the short 2020 season and never played. Then he went to Korea or Japan. Then he just vanished off the face of the earth. I, I don't know. Maybe we need to, to put out a missing person's report about this guy. Maybe he got captured by aliens. I don't know, but if you've seen Yasiel Puig, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, hit that dislike button if you didn't like this video. Otherwise, see you next time. Toodles. Hopefully I don't go 0-8.